In this video, we will talk about brass knuckles, and we will try to understand how dangerous they can be in real life, who first invented them, and why they are banned in most countries of the world. Hello all, this is Pop Weapon Channel, where I talk about weapons for movies, computer games, and find the most interesting facts, dispel myths, and compare real weapons with what we see on the screens. Brass knuckles, in our minds, for some reason, has long been associated with bandits. And it is easy to explain. After all, in the movies we have often seen this weapon, mainly in the hands of various villains. But if you delve a little deeper into the history of this truly complex weapon, it becomes clear that it turns out that it was common throughout the 20th century. Essentially, a brass knuckle is a contact striking fist fighting weapon made of a hard material that is put on or squeezed between the fingers with a smooth or spiked fighting part. But despite the simplicity of its design, the brass knuckles are a very dangerous weapon. Its strong blow can cause serious injuries of varying severity. The earliest mentions of brass knuckles as a weapon of gladiators date back to the II century ad. Roman historians left a description of a bronze fist as a bronze plate with slits for the fingers, clamping it in the fist of the fighter. But for the first time historians were sure that it was a cestus belt reinforced with bronze tabs, with which ancient boxers cheated their hands. The next to remember the brass knuckles were the Venetian sailors of the 15th and 16th centuries. During boarding battles in cramped ships' quarters, they had to use the hilt more often to deliver blows. And Venetian sailors reinforced the pride of their weapons, with special spikes that already resembled our modern cassettes. And around the same time a variety of cassettes became very popular. Well now let's understand how brass knuckles are made, and how they work. The brass knuckles are usually made in a factory artisanal or homemade way from metal, hard plastic, bone, or other hard material. It was later that they started to make holes in the plate for the fingers as well. Classic brass knuckles have a common part with or without spikes. The stop is a part that rests in the palm, so that when you hit it, the kinetic energy hit us in the hand, not in the fingers. Otherwise, not only your opponent, but also your bones will suffer damage on impact. Well, now it's time to figure out why the brass knuckles may be so dangerous, and it may seem to many that simply by increasing the mass of our hand we will already be doing more serious damage. But that's not really the case. What happens is that when we attack someone with our brass knuckles, we transfer the weight of not only our hand, but of our whole body to that very point. And so the impact can be dangerous. And in this case, the weight of the person who hits will play a decisive role. And if we take an average weight of an adult man of about 70 to 80 kilograms, then, as you understand, the extra 300 grams won't really play a role. But what really affects the damage caused by the brass knuckles is its material. For example, if you were to hit a tree with a stick, the stick would just bounce off, and the tree wouldn't get any serious damage. However, if you take any metal object and forcefully strike a log or some wood with it, it is very likely to leave dents in the log. And the same situation happens with a hand strike. When we strike another person's body with our fist, it is composed of the same materials, the same flesh, and the same bone. Accordingly, a person will not suffer deep wounds or serious fractures, because the two materials of the same density collide, and they cushion against each other. However, if the same force is struck with a metal brass knuckle, the density of metal is much higher than that of human bone and flesh. And because of that, one blow can tear a person's skin, or if metal collides tightly with bone, the bone can simply break. Of course, a lot depends on the situation here, and not every blow will lead to a fracture, but at least the metal in this case is much more dangerous than our brass knuckles. But it's also worth knowing what varieties of brass knuckles exist these days. First, let's deal with the classic variants, which come with and without spikes. Such brass knuckles are well suited for the same bandits, after all, they can be concealed in the pocket and at the most responsible moment simply in casually sticking them in your hand in the pocket you can take out their already fully combat-ready fist. That is, according to their classification, they belong to the same group as sabers, a checkers, knives, daggers, finish knives, dirks and other, not less terrible and dangerous things, specially designed for striking a living target. And, as we know, it is illegal to carry edged weapons. But also, I think, many people are curious as to why it is that the cassettes have fallen under the ban. So why exactly are brass knuckles banned? And actually the definition here is quite simple, because unlike a knife or an axe, which can be used around the household, a brass knuckles can only be useful to you in one case, that is to break someone's face. Now, just to give you an example. Let's imagine that we have a gun, you can point it at a criminal and he won't want to poke his head in. 
and you probably wouldn't even need to shoot him, and he'd already be scared. And he will most likely stop his attack. That is, a good weapon for self-defense does not necessarily have to cause fatal injuries, but the brass knuckles are very dangerous in this respect. During the First World War, German soldiers had a certain hybrid. It was the so-called trophy knife, which was essentially the most common knife, but only with a brass knuckles built into its handle. This was needed to easily fight in confined spaces and not only deliver stabbing stabbing blows, but also to strike like a regular fist. Well, the most unexpected variety is the brass knuckles in the form of an iPhone case. And at first glance, the developers of this miracle of technology were guided by good intentions. For example, they decided to steal your iPhone in a dark alley. And then suddenly the iPhone turns into a real weapon. Except that such cases have thin frames on the sides. And even if you manage to use such a case as a weapon, the iPhone after that is unlikely to remain intact, because the entire force of the blow will be directed precisely at it. So it is more of a toy than a really useful thing. But the ingenuity didn't end there. For example, in 1980, John M. Greenleaf of New York developed a four-charge self-defense device that was a firing brass knuckles. It was a flat, rectangular case the size of a cigarette case and had four barrels that were loaded with flares. And when the side lever was pressed, they would fire off in turn. But don't get too excited here, because if you fire such rockets at too close a range, you're likely to set yourself on fire. But to summarize, is the brass knuckles more of a good weapon or a bad one? If we talk about the pluses, it can be easily hidden in the pocket of a jacket or pants. And in theory, an inconspicuous and compact weapon can save someone's life in a critical situation. Also the use of brass knuckles does not require any special training because the blows are made with standard intuitive movements. Plus, the brass knuckles are cheap to make and you can make them yourself at home from almost any improvised means. However, the disadvantages include the fact that with a strong blow you can still injure your hand too, damaging your palm. But even if you are not injured, every hard hit with a brass knuckle can be painful. Even when you are hitting and not hitting you, because the metal will cut into your hand. But we should also understand that if we compare the brass knuckles to other weapons, it lengthens our hand literally by a couple of centimeters. This means that our enemy possessing even a small knife or stick will have an advantage in combat, as he will be able to strike from a greater distance, while the brass knuckles can show themselves only at the closest contact distance. But for us, such a weapon could most often come across not in real life, but rather in movies. For example, in the movie Legend, we can clearly observe how gangster showdowns in bars worked back then. The main character casually makes his beautiful scoundrelly speech, and after that a scuffle begins. And if you look closely, you can see that the gangster is holding the same brass knuckles. And he put them on very quickly and unnoticed, which, in principle, is fully consistent with real life. That is, the brass knuckles can just lie quietly in your pocket until the time comes, and then drastically change the course of the battle. And your enemy will not even suspect anything. And as you can see, they can do a lot of damage. Or else, for example, there was such a famous movie as Bloodsport, which shows us a very original version of something like the brass knuckles. In the final fight, Jean-Claude Van Damme and his opponent trick their hands with bandages and then dip their fists in tar and dip them into a container of broken glass, which emphasizes just how brutal the battle would be. So despite its apparent simplicity, brass knuckles can be quite effective. If you were curious about the history of this weapon, then please like it and write in the comments. And most importantly, if you definitely want to not miss my future videos, be sure to activate the bell under my videos so you know exactly when something new comes out. What other interesting weapons should we look at in the next videos?